Welcome back to the show and time for our Road to Charlotte segment. Of course, with the title game now seemingly closer each week, obviously, the first Saturday night in December at Bank of America Stadium. And our ACC digital correspondent, Corey McCartney, is here. As we start with a ball game that was supposed to be played on Thursday night, it ended up being pushed back to Saturday because of Hurricane Irma and allowed Miami, Florida State to play last weekend, and that's Georgia Tech in Miami, which turns out to be just a huge game in the Coastal Division. Yeah, two big variables I'm looking at here. Obviously, Mark Walton out for the Hurricane is such a big factor for them offensively. And then you're also looking at Georgia Tech, a top six defense, but they haven't played an offense at this point that's ranked more than 89th uh, in the country. So a couple big things, I think, to watch in that one. Jackets, of course, are coming off a bye week, as Corey mentioned, after the victory over North Carolina and Pittsburgh in consecutive weeks. Second best rushing team in the country. And that'll be a key for the Georgia Tech victory, I would think, right? Yeah, they got to be able to, to control the ball, and, and they're going to have their hands full against that athletic Miami defensive front. So I think that's going to be a huge thing to watch. How much can they kind of slow down the pace of this game? Hurricanes have been very good, and of course, Mark Rick knows all about matchups with Georgia Tech's Paul Johnson. His offense is one that is one of the more difficult ones to prepare for and, and to try to slow down, quite frankly. Um, he's... Uh, he understands his system so well that he doesn't even need a call sheet. He just watches the game. He knows exactly what to call. He sees something. He knows how to counter punch. If he sees something, there's, there's probably nothing you could put in front of him that he hasn't seen before and that he won't react to properly. And then his guys tend to execute extremely well. Well, you heard from Coach Rick. Corey, there's no way to measure this, but... Miami, Georgia Tech, and Virginia Tech are all in this little triangle right now, so it's critical in the Coastal. Yeah, it, the, those three teams are the ones ultimately going to decide how this thing plays out. This game this weekend is going to be massive in this Coastal Division. Well, 10 seasons in in Atlanta, Paul Johnson knows how big this one is, too. A lot of importance. It's a division game, uh, and those games tend to count as two, actually, because the tiebreaker thing that's involved. So... Uh, Hopefully we'll have a good week of practice and go down and be able to give a good effort on Saturday. We It's a place we haven't played particularly well. Another game on the schedule to keep an eye on is Duke and Florida State. The Blue Devils looking to rebound from a loss at Virginia, which Daniel Jones didn't play very well. And, Corey, maybe some injuries, some inconsistencies. They're still creating turnovers on defense, though. Yeah, Jones, a 58.6 rating his last game out, his worst start of the season. So it, we know how good this Florida State defense can be, especially when you talk, start talking about that secondary with McFadden and James. I think they could cause him some big problems. I think he's eager. You know, he's hungry, uh, which is what your first response should be. It shouldn't be upset or concerned or, you know, I, I like that response. He's really eager. And so he's listening, you know, he always listens. But, I mean, he's, he's listening. Meanwhile, for Florida State, the scenario is the Knolls are one in three. And their only win is a scrap with Wake Forest. It's the first time since 1976. How do they avoid going one and four, I guess? Cam Akers, 121 yards last week. Keep riding him. James Blackman has been better in the fourth quarter, 158 rating in the fourth. So three uh, touchdown passes in the fourth quarter, too. He's gotten better as the game goes on. That's going to be key, I think, in this one. Well, Jimbo Fisher knows his offensive line is getting better. They've still got a ways to go. And it's certainly going to be a big key for Florida State to come out with a victory against the Blue Devils. Just that you, no matter what your record is, you play. See, I know, I mean, as fans, and we all have goals, and I know this, and we, what do we have to play? You got everything to play for. First of all, if you're, what if you're a junior eligible draft guy or senior eligible draft guy? What's the NFL looking at? They look at that tape, they see a guy playing his tail off for a team that hadn't, that has, has, has suffered some tough losses. That guy's got heart. He's got, he's got class. He's got, that's a guy I want on my team. He brings us back. He's a guy that can change your organization. So to say, you know, what's there to play on, the mindset of, that, yeah, of course, they want to think that. They could be one in three and one in the Rose Bowl, of course. Now, what we got to do is learn to prepare and play Duke. I like, I love the outlook there. I love the intensity. I love the focus of that. You know what I'm saying? Because that says that I'm all in on this team and I'm doing everything. But there's so many reasons individually, team-wise, that you just keep playing your tail off. And that's what we build it on and what they're built on. Well, Jimbo Fisher knows his team still has a lot to play for. I think that's hard to process a little bit at one and three, but the reality is this could still be a very good Florida State team. Yeah, it could, and as we find Blackman sorting things out offensively, I think that's going to be the biggest key for them. We know that defense is really good, but how much progress can he make? Because when we saw earlier in the season, that's where they had the biggest setbacks. Well, it's nice to be here for Jeff Fischel because he's undefeated as we <laughs> move to our pick segment, right? I mean, unbelievable. 22-0 and 0 is Jeff Fischel on the year. 
Uh, Corey and I are two games back, and we'll have to check with James Bates this weekend to see what we can do to maybe renovate uh, his second half of the season. And Jeff Francoeur joins you this week as our celebrity picker on the podcast. Yeah, former Brave. He's obviously in the Fox Sports South broadcast team now. A Clemson <laughs> recruit at one time, so he had a lot of interesting to say things they need to say about his recruiting time there with the Tigers. By the way, Francoeur told Corey, and it's a little tease for the podcast, He'd like to run down the hill one time, right? Yeah, he wants to rub the rock and run down that hill. That, that's the one thing. Not getting hit, that's what he wants to do, run down the hill. I would think Clemson people could make that happen. Here's a look, here's a look at our picks. Uh, everybody's on the Tigers and the Wolfpack and the Seminoles. Uh, Bates is going to take the flyer on Adazio and his dudes playing Louisville. And Corey goes with the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech in a tough ball game at Hard Rock Stadium. Well, we'll see if somebody can knock Jeff Fischel from the ranks of the unbeaten. That's what happens when you miss a week when you're on assignment, by the way. Corey, thank you as always. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned. There's plenty more to come on this week's edition of ACC All Access.